Peace family. Hey man, y'all gonna have to call me consistent vote if I keep on coming with the mud back to back like that. You already know. <laughs> but um, like I was saying, peace family, peace to all the high vibrational people, peace to all the people trying to, you know, raise that vibration to a higher frequency, you know, and welcome back to all my loyal subscribers. Hello, all my new subscribers. If you dropped in on accident, it was not an accident. You are in the right place. So just stick around. Now, you know, I got it. I am, you know, back in the inside spot right now. I little bit like in the outside, but like yesterday it was just like too many bugs, too many, st too much stuff going on outside. So best to try to keep it inside for the, you know, not the time being, but at least today, okay? So, yesterday I was just, you know, um, doing some studying, of course. It's a book that I've had for a minute, but I have really never um, went into depth of understanding because as you read something or as you... Because as soon as you pick up a book, that book was guided to you. Or anything that you're around that is now yours, it's just basically like a electron that's around you. And it's basically attracting to you to make you complete. And then once you're complete, or once you've done your thing, then that's when you give an electron away to something else that needs an electron. So basically with us, we have certain things in our vortex or around us that's helping us be fulfilled, complete, things like that. And um, the difference between, you know, an atom and us, even though we made out of atoms, is that, you know, atom actually knows when it's, what its point is that makes it what it wants to be. Like, let's say carbon with six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. It knows that once it gets those six, three sixes that it's complete. Like with us, we'll get those three sixes and still not be complete, still feel like we're not satisfied and not happy. It's just like, you know, that's what brings down the rap on us because you have to be satisfied with what you have in order to get more. Like, if you're not happy with what you already got, then how you asking for some more? You know, it's just like, it's just like asking for food and you still haven't ate what's in your plate yet. It's just like, you know. And um, like I said, I've been, um, well, I was telling somebody yesterday, I've been like really getting into um, Greek Greekology and stuff like that. Mostly because it was one of the, um, one of the original texts that came right after you know, the Egyptians, you know, um, were conquered. And we, as we all know, the Egyptians were a great, a great civilization. And still some of the stuff the Egyptians did, we still don't know how did they how they did it. So obviously they were technologically advanced from their time construct, you know. Because what we see as technologically advanced to us may not have been advanced to them. Because just because we see it in a different perspective, like if you coming from one age to another, you are not gonna see it the same as someone who um, who went from one age to another, but still in a different, not so much ecosystem environment, but let's just say, what's oh, so good? Cause today we have you know, mechanical pens and stuff like that. But back then they had oil pens and stuff like that. Like they still were advanced, even though it was in a different time period. Like that doesn't matter. We think just because we more in the future that we have more, that we more technolo technologically advanced than people that were in the past, but that's not necessarily true because they could have had things that helped them or that were way more beneficial to their real lives than we have to our lives these days. Just because we have more or we think we have more that don't necessarily mean that we are more abundant. Because they was actually Egyptians was really tapped in, like and they had their whole 
you know, their whole colony civilization tapped in. Like, it wasn't just a certain group of people that was tapped in. Like, with our civilization, it's a lot of lost people and there's some people that's tapped in. But with them, it was more people tapped in or not as many people lost. So whenever, um, whenever the Egyptians, well, you see, I just read that right into the list. Yeah, I'm going to keep it long. But whenever the Egyptians were doing anything, like, they created the first paper, boats, like, things of that sort, they were doing that just off the nature of just doing it. Like, nobody had to tell them, oh, we need something like that. Like, no. They used what was around them and utilized it and then made it to where it was beneficial to their lives. Us, we go in, we don't even really create our own stuff. Like, we just technically use stuff that was, you know, most of our stuff brought in from other places in the world. Like, we don't even utilize what's around us. Like, we have mostly our, our own stuff in, in the U.S., but we don't, we don't utilize it as much as we should. So, when the Egyptians was, you know, scribing and doing what they do, this is all going to wrap around to what, what I'm getting to. Just just stick with me. Whenever the Egyptians was writing down, because the, the Egyptians was tapped in at a higher frequency, meaning that they was getting information from higher gods. They were getting information from people, you know, from entities, however you want to say it, because we put names on certain deities and stuff, but they really not no names. It's really just an energy that's, associated with it and once you tapped into that certain energy then you basically are them because some of these energies and stuff like that have never even came to earth to have a body or something like a name like sometimes it's just like an energy that come with it like like people walk in the room it's an energy it's not a name that you associate with that energy it's just like oh they got that certain type of energy and you just know just like in a dream, it could be somebody you don't know, but you recognize their energy. It's an energy thing, way more than it's a name or energy thing that we associate with, you know, with physicality. Like, that's physical stuff. Like, sometimes it's, it's way beyond the physical. So, when they, the Egyptians got tapped in, they knowledge, they knew that one day they was going to have to fall because all good things come to an end at the end of the day. Even though, you know, you can keep it, you can keep something in the prestigious of, you know, quality, and it's still going, it's still going to decay. It's still going to have to break down and something else going to have to rise. Like, it's just nature. Like, so once the Egyptians knew this, this is when they started, um, because they knew way well before invasions or anything that people was going to try to come for their territory and stuff like that because they had one of the best territories. They had the Nile River. They had... And with the Nile River, it brought in the best fertilized earth. Um, it brought in um, the animals because we already know that even in the wild and jungle, the animals going to come to the water source. So whenever they came to the water source, they had the animals... They got transportation because they're using the Nile River. They having the best three things. Like, what's what more could you ask for? You got fertilized land. You got transportation. And you have, like, um, just somewhere where you don't have to really travel out to have to go get those things. So they was able to really tap in more because they was more homed in and using the things that was around them so they won't have to go to outside sources. So whenever the invasion happened, um, this this is when the um, the Greeks and stuff like that started to get the information from the Egyptians, because the Egyptians was way more tapped in on the uppers when, um, Greeks and all them they was you know no offense to any of the you know different type of Greek civilizations, but they wasn't as much tapped into the what they couldn't see. They was more focused on what they could see. So, they would get these certain type of, um, because we know everybody not really focused on reading and stuff. So, they would get these philosophers and stuff like that to basically, you know, scribe what they saw and the stories that they interpreted and even stories that they got from 
Because, I mean, you you can invade a place, but you don't kill everybody. So some of the pharaohs that were still, you know, just could take your land. I mean, we got to, you know, massacre you. Now, if you don't want to stay in line, then we're going to do our thing. But, you know, that's how they was looking at it. So some of the pharaohs did still live. And, of course, we still have Egypt to this day. But um, basically with the, um, they were scribing and telling them all the, like, the virtues of life, you know, because they had already went through it. Somebody who done went through it, they can definitely tell you way more than somebody who haven't been through it. So why not learn from the Egyptians and the people who had these great civilizations and fail, learn from them so we won't make the same mistakes, basically. So whenever these philosophers, which I'm studying, uh, uh, Herod Herodotus, I think that, yeah, that's his name. He just like a philosopher, and they call him the historian because he had like, obviously not the best, but he had the most, um, the most sequential, the most it made the most sense to most of the people. So that's this day, you know, they great historian they like to call him, like I said. So he had most of the answers as far as, you know, what life meant to them and stuff like that. The things that we ask computers and stuff like that, they would just ask a certain philosopher and they would have like the best knowledge. So, um, basically whenever some of the information that they gathered was on that happiness not, happiness is not meant to stay around forever. It never was meant to and we just kind of we lost that um, perspective on it because as far as us Americans and stuff like that, like, I feel like we just got that urge for happiness and we just want, we on the pursuit of happiness. Like, literally, that's what they call it. They want you to pursue happiness, pursue these American dreams and things like that. And even the most, even the gods knew, because uh, one philosopher asked another one, he just like, Cause it was a it was a king. And he asked, like I said, they would go to the philosophers just for information. So, a king asked one of the philosophers, like, who would you say was the happiest? Of course, you're gonna think in your mind you got the most money, the most power, the most success in your eyes. You are gonna say that you was the most happiest, which is not always the truth, because you have high hopes for things. And if you don't reach those high hopes, then you're going to be supposedly let down, or you're going to, by let down, it just means you're going to drop in frequency. So, whenever you try to get these certain type of happiness and you don't reach it, you're going to drop low in frequency versus somebody who is just even tempered, even energy. And they're not trying to reach the heights of energies and they're not trying to go low in energy. They just at that certain level that certain homeostasis to where it's like perfect, you know, it's just that spot to where you, that's where you want to be all day. It's just at a balanced level. So he told him, um, he act like I said, the king asked the philosopher, who's the happiest person in our nation? And he just, he told him he was like the person who's, um, the most righteous and, um, also dies in a prime. Because well, we're going to break down the first part. Somebody who lives in righteous, somebody who just happy to be, happy to be able to smell the roses, happy to be able to see the sun. People who see those things and this happiness is not going to take much for them to be happy versus somebody who has seen so much. Let's say that you have done all these certain things in the world. Yeah, you're more experienced and you're more yada, yada, yada. But it, you, that don't necessarily make you more happier because somebody who hasn't did much can be way more happy than you because your happiness is way... It's like chasing a high. Like it's always like chasing a high every day. Like, you chasing you chasing that happiness. You chasing that happiness that you felt versus somebody who not really chasing nothing. They just kind of just chill and they're stable. They're not going to have these highs and lows or well, not so many highs and lows because if you rate higher, you know, just like they say, the, the tallest... 
the tallest people fall the hardest, you know. They always say that and just just it go the same concept. You could be like tall in happiness, but then when you don't get what you want, you're gonna drop the hardest. Versus somebody who is just there, when they drop it, it's not gonna be as hard because like they height of happiness is not so high. So that that's what make them righteous because um they not asking for much, you know. Some people want the world. Some people just want with the, having the world is gonna take away more energy trying to make sure everything around the whole world is more secure. That's way more energy, too much anxiety. But somebody who just you know focused on what's around them and what they can actually control because you can't control what's happening on the other side of the world. You can only trust what you can see. You can you can trust what's around you for sure. You don't know what you can't see. Like based on um, that one thing, anyways. It's alive and dead at the same time. So why are you worried about something you can't control? Because it, it could be alive or dead at the end of the day. And you worried about something you can't control. Because you can't control it until you can see it and you can actually interact with it because it's going to be changing positions anyway. So you can't control it. Anyway, so that's what the righteous part. With the um dying in, in, the, um, in the prime part, that comes as like... It, I ain't going to say it was a surprise because... A lot of people already know, like, they be like, why the best people die young? And it's because that's what, that's actually the, well, based on some of these philosophers, they got they, um, they got their philosophies from the Egyptians. So, um, and the Egyptians got it straight from the, um, you know, the higher up, the higher realm, because they was tapped in. So, dying in your prime is not always a bad thing, because... If you think about it, yeah, we can live to like 120 and things like that. But when you that age, you not you happy, but you not as mobile. You not as you all you can do is reminisce on the. Now you ain't got to, but most people they are gonna be reminiscing on days when they had it all, had the best equipment, had the best body and shape, all that. Because they not they still not happy in that form, and the longer you hear the. I ain't gonna say the hardest to be happy, but you know, you done seen it all before, so you just at that point where you just like, you just living at that point. So let's just say you do go in your prime, you at the height of your happiness, and not so much your happiness, but you're at the height of your frequency. Because let's just think about it. When you, when you, all these things are fresh to you, it's just like a little kid, they're so excited, happiness, happiness. Because they never seen, they never experienced these things before. Everything is new to them. It's a high frequency. So you leaving at a high frequency is better than you leaving at a more, you know, when everything is good for you. You leaving at that frequency going to have you at a resonate in a way higher frequency versus somebody who was, let's say somebody who passed away at 25 and they was extra happy, life was going good for them. You know, they had that high frequency, like they was still seeing new, experiencing new things, so their frequency was real high. Okay, switch that around to somebody who, that same person, 25, now let's say they're 50. They done seen more, they kind of life more stable. They not, you can still be excited about stuff, but it's not that same type of excitement. So you're gonna have a good frequency, but it ain't gonna be that high frequency that you once had because it's just still repetitious to you to where it's like, uh, it's not as fulfilling. So that's why even going to your prime is like they said, somebody who live a righteous life and someone who like, you know, dies in their prime, transcends in their prime. Sorry, it's my call. Oh shit. My <laughs> Freaking um some of the ashes had dropped on me and stuff be hot, yeah, you know. <laughs> but um yeah. With that being said though, and if you think about it, that kinda is the best way to live at the end of the day because you don't got your your hopes up for something that may never happen. So you're just at a you know, you're at peace with the world, you're at peace. And then you're still at that height of your excitement. So it's just like who says somebody want to live to a hundred and something, you know? The uh, older generations are always saying that the young generations, you know, we transcend the young and transcend the quickest because 
maybe that's what the uh, universe want right now. It want higher energies. I know it's hard to say that, but like, maybe it want certain type of energies to transcend so we can raise the frequency of the planet because if everybody who come here stand at, you know, to certain high ages and, you know, with a lower frequency versus somebody who passing quicker, but leaving with a higher frequency, it's still raising the frequency of the planet at the end of the day. Because the universe don't, like I got to be saying, it don't see it as good as bad. It's just doing what's best for the whole at the end of the day. If what's best for the whole is for people to live at a younger age because that's what their energy is resonated at the highest, then so be it, you know? So, I mean, at the end of the day, I do understand it. So, I mean, it just gotta, it just has to be at the end of the day. But, um, yeah, family, definitely, like I said, gonna be coming with some, I think I'm gonna hop into the little, um, well, not little, but like the Greekology for a little bit because it's actually giving concepts of how, even though we're not getting it here straight from the Egyptians, the Greeks, got so much from the Egyptians, if not everything that you basically studying from the Egyptians, even though, because even as far as the the paper, I know y'all remember them big scribes that the uh, Greek the Greeks had. Those were made out of papaya. And who came up with a papaya? The Egyptians came up with papaya, which came from this plant that grew along the Nile River that they would use so that they could, of course, write with it and do other things with it as far as like, like I said, making boats and stuff like that. They would make that out of papaya. But um, yeah, family, um, we definitely like, it's, it's a good lesson. It's a good book. Um, the book called, it's called the Hermes book. And it's a great read. It's a great read for sure. I, only, I ain't even made it halfway through, and it's just, like, so much knowledge and so much, you know, help and understand. Because, I mean, if we, it just helped me because I know we, are like, a lot of Americans and stuff, we always chasing that happiness, and it's like, we want happiness to last forever, and if you don't expect it to last forever, then you won't be so let down when it don't last forever. Like, just be happy for the experience. And like I was saying yesterday, just be happy for the knowledge that you was able to obtain by going through that thing instead of always expecting it to stay the same because nothing stays the same. We are in a vibrational world. Everything around you is vibrating. So nothing is staying the same. As soon as it's created, even as a thought, it's already breaking down. And that's even with... Anything, you have. an idea could break down. Just if you don't write it down, if you don't do something with it, it's gonna break down. If you gonna lose it, because that's what the, it's. It's a vibration. Like I said, you take that vibration, you bring it down. But even when it, you bring it down to that lower vibration, it wanna go back up because you not. If you don't use it, it's gonna just go back up into the ether, and somebody else gonna get the idea, and that's how somebody else could take your ideas. Cause you ain't doing nothing with it. You're not putting it out. You're not taking ownership of an idea that was given to you. Because everybody don't get the same ideas because everybody not at a certain frequency. So you, some information, some people can't even, it's like access denied at some point. Like you can't even see what's up at these certain levels because you can't even get information from these levels because you're not vibrating at a certain vibration to be able to grasp these high vibrational ideas and bring them down. So that's why they go to certain people who actually have that high frequency why you think they would people would leave the city and go to these oracles and stuff like that that was in the woods, way secluded because their frequency was resonating way higher, so they was able to they able to grasp these certain type of ideas and energies and futures and things like that that regular people in civilization couldn't get because they had different type of frequencies and their frequencies based on their happiness and you know things of that sort not even just only happiness fulfillment like that they felt fulfilled with they being in their cave and having their fire you know things like that that's why i can control these elements have more in touch with the things that are around them because it's really that's really them they're not somebody who in the city always getting a new 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 I know they respect what they had. If it was one crystal ball that was from 100 years old, 
ago and stuff like that, they was appreciating it. And with appreciation, you can tap into way bigger frequencies. That's why I've been talking about appreciation in my stuff. Today was about just being accepting where you are and not chasing these highs of happiness, chasing that happiness high. <laughs> so yeah, with that being said, fam, I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Like I was saying, peace to all the high vibrational people. Continue to resonate high, continue to learn, continue to grow. To all the low vibrational people, you know, continue to at least strive towards those high vibrational and taking a higher path. Um, should we thank y'all for tapping in again today? Like I be saying, you know, we're gonna come back with another one as soon as the, you know, the angels, the guardians, everyone tell me that it's time to release again, then I release again. And it's become more frequent because they, you will notice, like even when I was reading at first, it was like, it was nothing to tell y'all, you know? But when it's something to tell, it's like, it's just something in your mind to be like, this is something that needs to be spread, you know? So I do what I'm guided to do because everything don't lead me, don't guide me to share it all the time. Sometimes it's just meant for me to ingest and me to accept and me to just use in my life. And some things are meant to be given to the masses. Like I don't make the decisions. I just follow the guidelines that the higher ups give me, you know, at the end of the day, my ancestors give me. But yeah, with that being said, peace to all my loyal subscribers, peace to the family, peace to all the new subscribers. Thank y'all for all the likes. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the subscriptions. We're gonna continue to grow. We're gonna continue to spread the information, spread this knowledge. Spread this insight on everyone here until we all at that certain frequency when we all on one accordance and we're gonna rise even faster as a nation, as a people. So with that being said, peace family. It was a great lesson. So I hope y'all be back again. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I say, I say, I say, peace.